New features released this month by Evoto. Full disclaimer, they did reach out to me to review the new features. But like I always say, this is software that I use and pay for. So while it is a sponsored post, they have never said to me what I should and shouldn't say. This is purely my opinion. Um, they don't actually get to see the video before I upload it. So let's get into it. Um, under the skin retouching, scroll down until you get to body skin. And this is a great one for evening out skin tones. As you can see, if we go to dodge and burn, dodge and burn is really just evening out the difference between the highlights and the shadows. Um, and effectively what you're trying to do is bring those two values close together, which would then enhance um, uneven skin. So let's have a look here. We just slide the slider over. And I think that's done a pretty good job. What I do like to do is if you come up to the blemish removal and you come down to body skin, body blemishes, and you just slide that all the way up. And then we look at the before and after. Specifically in that area, I think it's done a fantastic job. You can see it's just evening out and trying to blend that transition from light to dark. Um, this area, yeah, it didn't do such a good job. I think that's quite challenging because of the harshness of the sun. You could go in and soften the skin a bit more. Let's go back to skin retouching. Frequency separation. So while the skin does look better, it really didn't do such a great job. Let's have a look at another example. This is only something you should do if the client maybe is self-conscious about their stretch marks. Um, but I think in this image specifically, I just like to highlight the fact that I think they were uh, celebrating different body styles, but it does really use, um, make a good use case for our example. So if we dive back into the skin retouching, we're not talking about facial skin. We're going to come down to body skin. And that is doing a fantastic job. If we cranked it all the way, it literally, it, it does, it takes away everything. So that's probably too much. I don't like everything to be absolutely perfect. I think it still needs to be real and natural. And the great thing about this software is that you have full control, even though it is AI, it's not a one click and done. So you could bring that back to somewhere where you're happy and comfortable with. Um, and just to look at the before and after again. I mean, that's pretty, pretty magic. Um, okay, so moving along. The next feature is the marionette lines. So marionette lines are the lines that extend downward. As we age, we lose elasticity in our face and it can even make our skin or our expression look um, maybe a little bit stern or a little bit sad. Um, in our example, she looks absolutely fantastic, but you can see a little bit of shadowing within the lines. So even though she's smiling, I still think it's a great, great example. Okay, so if we come back into blemish removal, scroll down to marionette lines, and we dial that up, Ta -da! and that looks still absolutely beautiful and natural at 54%. You can, of course, crank it all the way, but then I, I feel like you can actually see where the retouching has taken place. So I'm going to dial that back down somewhere around 50%. The next is the 11 lines. The 11 lines are, I think I'm starting to get them, these lines right here. I don't even need to do that. You can see it. There it is. Sometimes it just stays there. Okay. And what we can do is just crank that up again. And that actually worked beautifully. And again, the only thing that we're seeing there, if you zoom right in, this is actually foundation. I know it's, it's pixelating. I took this image off a uh, stock library and then just do the before and after. It's very, very subtle. I would maybe even bring it down to like 30%. And there you have it. And we have another example. 
I think this is also a really good example just to highlight how powerful it is. So if we go into the 11 lines, I softened it up. I most likely wouldn't do it to this type of picture, but again, purely just to show you the power of the tool and how accurate it is at just refining those points. And again, if you are unhappy, you could come in and refine your mask a little bit and just take it off where you think it's maybe applied it too much. And then there you go. Something that I've always struggled with as a retoucher here can be really, really challenging. So let's scroll down until we hit here. And so there are some other new features, uh, hair volume. You could just bring the hair up a little bit. You can see it is actually pushing out the line a little bit. So I think that wouldn't be something I would do in this shot, but maybe we can either pull in or pull out the side hair a little bit. And I know what you could also do is maybe just jump into the warp tool, increase the size, and you could actually just give it a little bit more volume like that. That's another little way to do it. Okay, so stray hair removal is one of my favorites. Okay, so let's look at that again, specifically in this area. I mean, that's insane. It looks super natural. And coming into this little section, the smooth hair, Let's dial it up. I mean, you can dial down your fr tame frizzy hair. That would just leave in a bit of texture. I think we're going to leave it all the way up. So really, I mean, look how beautiful her hair is looking on that side. Just very much neater and cleaner. And still looking super, super real. Increasing the hair shine. Which again, is kind of like dodging and burning just for hair. Because as you can see, if I bring it down, the lights go a bit darker. And if we push it up, it's just where there is light in her hair. It's exaggerating that. So maybe I don't like it at the top of the head. So again, I can go in, refine that, just brush that out. That did not do what I wanted it to do. Strange. Erase mask. Flows at 100%. Let's do that a bit more. Let's see if that worked. Okay, so that's interesting. It did not actually do what I wanted to do, which is nice because, again, we're seeing things in real time. That So then if that is the case, I would maybe just dial down the shine. White hair blackening. This will only work with, with dark hair. And you can see it did actually do a little bit. And we can dial that up a bit more and in our lovely model here we can also look at the marionette line so she doesn't really have anything I mean she's obviously young and beautiful but what we can do is just see if it does do anything it did clean it up a little bit and we can push the smile lines and while we're here let's just see if we we want to leave her freckles didn't bring them right back. So let's start again. Dial back the freckles and then maybe brush out where we want to keep in her natural beauty marks. Let's see that. And that did a much better job. There we go. That's looking fantastic. She has no 11 lines, so we're going to leave that. Let's see what happens if we go into our just let's push up body blemishes slightly and into the skin retouching and scroll down or scroll up, should I say. Facial skin, we want body skin even, dodge and burn. Did it do anything? A little bit, a little bit, not really noticeable, but just very minor. Sometimes less is more. But I think holistically looking at that, just looking at her hair and the mind adjustments we did on her skin, I think that looks pretty, pretty natural. Okay, so we've looked at 
body skin smoothing. We've looked at the hair retouching. There are new masking features that I would like to draw your attention to. Um, this is probably more for maybe landscape unless you're shooting on location. So if we come into the top tab and we go into masking and click on background, entire background, or you can choose just the sky. So let's do that. And then when you make your adjustments, let's say we want to make this guy slightly more blue. I think that looks great. Let's go back into the water surface. You could just increase exposure. Maybe you pull down the saturation or the vibrance. Let's pull the vibrance down. That looked a little bit too blue. And what else have we got? We've got the mountain. And then I think, let's see if we pull the contrast down. It feels like it's a little bit too punchy for me. Something like that. Maybe reduce the clarity. Let's make it feel like it's slightly more out of focus. Then we can choose the beach. So just a small strip of the beach. Maybe bring down. Let's see if we bring up the exposure there. I think we've did quite a good job of making our picture look a lot more natural. Um, just an example of the custom marking, uh, custom masking. We either have the entire person, all the skin, facial skin only, just the neck area. Sometimes um, some people have like, they put sunscreen on their face, but then their neck is left exposed and gets a bit more tan and you'd like to even out that skin tone body skin only as you can see it's it's brilliant because it's picking out exactly just the eyebrows just the whites of the eyes the iris the lips so oral is an interesting one it is the inside of the mouth sometimes you see someone's tongue is sticking out and you want to kind of darken that down that would help super well again the hair just the clothing other that looks like it's picking up the fingernails or the fingers on that shot. Um, but let's just go, if we go into the background and we go sky, because is there, yep, yeah, picks up the mountains there. And maybe we make the sky a little bit more blue as well. Okay. So those are the new masking options. I do want to show you something else, which I recently learned about, which is fantastic. So often um, one of the first things that brought me to um, using AI in my retouching was cleaning up a white background. Um, and obviously you can change the color of that background. And now I think this is amazing is that, let's say for example, we're just gonna reset that. We wanna change our backdrop because for whatever reason, the client wanted a green backdrop. The problem with this is that, as you can see, it looks like she's just sort of floating in the air. There is no shadow on the ground. So previously, what you could do is that you could go in and add a shadow, right? But that does not look very good at all. And while you can tweak it, um, you can move the anchor points to where you think the feed should be. So that looks kind of okay as to where the like would be in relation to the face and then click okay and then obviously you could um soften that shadow a little bit blur it out i mean it's not terrible but it's not accurate because that isn't how the image was shot so if we reset that uh, let's just start again, choose a new color, go into add shadows, AI retain shadow. And I mean, that is pretty fantastic because that you can even see it's, it's really done a great job of like extending the shadow as to the density of the shadow in that area. That is exactly her shadow. And then what I would do is just maybe decrease the opacity, 
slightly just to give it a way more real looking um, sort of transition. The only thing I think uh, that I would like to see that generally with backgrounds is that obviously whatever background you're shooting on is going to reflect the color of that light back into the subject. Whereas here yeah, we can see it's like the edges are super, super clean. So I think possibly what you could do uh, as a quick fix would be then to take this into um, another software it's like Photoshop or even just putting a filter in front of that to try and like merge those layers together. I mean, sure, if you're scrolling on Instagram or um, maybe it's on a website, an e-com page, no one's really going to pick it up because they don't have a point of reference. Obviously, we're looking at the before and after, but you can see like the whites of her shirt, it almost blends seamlessly into the background. And if we were shooting on a colored background, the white wouldn't stand out as bright. You would feel it be uh, maybe a little bit more compressed, a bit more organic. Um, and I'd love to see some type of um, blending option that would help to sort of sell the composite. Okay, so moving on, we've got another image here. And I think what I'd like to try to do in this instance is maybe add a drop shadow. Let's see if we can do that. Backdrop changer. So let's see, we shot it on, say we wanted it on plain white because that's pretty close to our original. Um, add shadow. And let's put drop shadow. And let's say we want to bring it down slightly in the distance. Let's have it just slightly off like that. Maybe slightly lower because let's say our flash was actually quite high. Shadow distance. Just maybe something like that. Shadow angle. You can play with it a little bit. I mean, that could be quite realistic. And then you would go in and say, blur the shadow. Give it a bit of a gradient to make it a bit more subtle. Something like that. And I think that looks pretty realistic. Maybe even more realistic than our image. And that is pretty much it for my review of the new features of Evoto AI. I will leave a link in the description um, for a discount code. I think you get a couple of free credits with that as well. Um, if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the section below. I love, love hearing from you guys. I'm always happy to help where I can. Um, let me know if you're having any issues with any other software. Uh, I'd love to help out and we'll see you in the next video.